Hello again and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. Today we're going to be doing a watercolor sketch of a little landscape. I'm going to begin it, begin by using a flat brush with a little bit of blue watercolor on my brush. I'm using a golden nylon brush although there are many different brushes that you could use with watercolor. You could use sable brushes. Um, nylon, had, nylon brushes has become the recent trend I like nylon brushes because of their versatility. Um, I've got my brush loaded about 50% with paint, 50% with water. I'm also working on watercolor paper today. There's a variety of different types of watercolor papers um, with different thicknesses and different types of tooth. Um, you should experiment with different watercolor papers and find the one that best suits you. I've taped down my watercolor paper and I drew a, a light sketch in pencil. Now I'm just going in and putting a little bit of an indication of a sky. Remember that when you're using watercolor, the whiteness of your paper is going to be the white that you use. Um, so I'm leaving a little bit of room for the clouds and um, putting just an indication of, of a sky and I'm making sure that I keep it really nice and loose. Now I'm going to go back and indicate a little bit of the, the hills that are far off. So I've mixed a little bit of blue and green and I've made a blue green. And I want there to be a little bit of an illusion of atmosphere. So I'm letting this color be a little bit light. So I'm letting a lot of the, the white of the paper show through. You may also notice that I'm sticking with the wide flat brush that I'm using. Um, watercolor has a tendency to really last a long time on your brush, especially if you load it up well. So I can really cover a lot of ground with this brush. Uh, another thing you'll notice me doing a lot during this video is layering my colors. Right now I'm adding a little bit of wet watercolor to the wet surface that I've already touched, and that's called wet on wet. Um, that's going to allow some of the water to kind of spread out and kind of create an interesting effect and a little bit of a texture in the background. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip to my tree in the foreground. And what I've mixed here is a little bit of purple. I've mixed some brown in with that purple as well. And you might think purple, that seems like a strange color. Well, um, this is going to be the shaded side of the tree. So I've chosen to use purple because it is a cool color. Um, this purple in particular has a little bit more blue in it. So I'm allowing that to be a little bit of a shadow on that tree. I don't want to just use a straight brown or, or black. I want to definitely stay away from black as much as possible. Um, but the purple really makes for a natural shadow. So I'm just kind of blocking out where my tree is going to be. Um, with the purple and the brown. I'm also leaving a little bit of room for different values in the tree as well to make sure that it looks like a three-dimensional form. Um, you might can see a little bit of that texture here on the video. And I'm allow the tree to get a little darker the further right it goes because my light source is going to be eventually coming from the left side of the image. All right, at this point in time, I'm going to move away from the tree and start working on some of the colors for the grass. And I've mixed some yellow and I've mixed some green. I've made a nice yellow green. Um, colors that are warmer tend to appear closer, and colors that are cooler appear to be further away. So I'm going to let my hills in the background be the blue green, and I'm going to let my hill in the foreground be a nice warm green, more of a yellow green, so it appears closer. That will help us with creating the illusion of space here. So I'm just going to put a light application of that yellow green on there and try to get it a nice smooth even color to begin with. I'm going to let that dry and then come back to it in a few minutes. Next I'm going to go ahead and load my brush up with a little bit of the um, color that we're going to use for the, for the barn. And that's going to be a, a little bit of red and make that barn stand out because red and green are complementary so we're going to let that that contrast happen on there and I'm just going to block in this color still sticking with my wide brush so of course you'd be a little loose with things which watercolor demands
and I'm going to go back a little bit, make it a little bit darker, and put a little bit of a texture in there, putting more of that wet on wet, and I'm going to put a little brown on my brush and make that one side a little bit darker. Now, putting wet color on wet color is all all great um, and everything, but you also need to let some areas of the surface dry and then go back and layer your colors that way. That will help you build up the color and make it look more realistic and it's really um, it really gives you a lot more control with the watercolor. So because it's a watercolor sketch, I'm not letting this area dry completely, but um, normally I would. So I've gone back and put a little bit of shadow underneath that roof. That'll help that roof look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now my trees had a little bit of time to dry, so I'm going to go back with more of the purple and the brown, a little bit heavier this time with the paint, a little less water in there, so the paint's a little bit more solid. Here we are at the end of part one of the watercolor sketch tutorial. I'm adding a little bit of shadow here, and I hope you'll join us for part number two.